Hi everyone, it's Tara. Welcome back to my channel into a five on Friday video. As I mentioned in my last video, I've been reading a lot of cozy mysteries lately. Um, I've either like started new series or progressed in series that I started earlier this year or last year and I've really been enjoying it. I could do and I probably will do a video on like just why I love cozies in general. Um, but where I've been lately, like with work and with being a mom and all that jazz, the most appealing thing about cozies is that they are quick, easy reads. And so I've been reading a lot of them lately. So I decided to do a five on Friday, five on Friday video about some of the cozies that cozy mysteries that I've been reading lately. Um, as you probably know, if you have watched my channel for a little bit, I do read a lot of the Hannah Swinson series. I'm not going to talk about that. It's one of my favorite cozy mystery series ever. Check it out. But I'm not going to talk about that because I talk about it a lot. I also talk about the Sloan Krauss series by Ellie Alexander. Not going to talk about that one today. Another really great series. Check it out. Um, so these are some other cozies to like change things up a little bit. Um, so let's get into it. So first up, um, I started a new cozy mystery series. Um, book one just came out this year. I buddy read this with my mom and it is Arsenic and Adobo, part of the, the first book in the Tita Rosie's Kitchen mystery series by Mia P. Manansala. Um, this was a really cute cozy read. Um, so you follow, I don't know if it's Lila, Leela, I don't know how to pronounce the main character's name. She has moved back home recently to recover from a really hard breakup. Uh, she ends up helping her family run their restaurant. Um, and they're like kind of on the brink of like needing to close because the restaurant's not being like profitable. And so she's trying to spruce things up. This um, this food critic comes to the restaurant and like this food critic seems to have like an ax to grind because I'm pretty sure it's her ex. Yes, her ex-boyfriend. Um, he like has been eating at their restaurant late a lot lately. She's not really quite like quite sure why, but he ends up dropping dead in the middle of the restaurant, which is not good for a business that um, is already going through some financial troubles. So Leela, Lila, however you say her name, um, decides that she needs to kind of figure out like what's going on because right now it looks like her or her family poisoned this guy. So it was a good time. Um, it's a different, like the, the family, like Lila and her family have um, what are, what's their background? They are, why do I not remember? Filipino, I believe. I know the author is Filipino. I believe the family is Filipino as well. Um, in this, like the character's family, um, which was a nice like change of pace because a lot of the cozy mystery series that I read follow just like white women. Um, she has a dog, which is fun. She has like a best friend who is a riot. Like there was a couple like potential love interests that you see. So it's a really good time. It was a good first book in a series. I had a good time with it. Um, then we have On What Grounds by Cleo Coyle, the first book in the Coffee House mystery series. I buddy read this with Rainy and Amanda. And this one I'm kind of on the fence about. So I didn't hate it by any means. There was just a lot of like info dumping about coffee, how to brew coffee, like different ways to brew coffee, like beans, like different types of like coffee beans, things like that, which wasn't my favorite. But I'm hoping that because this was like the first book in a series that maybe moving forward, it won't be as bad. This was also like a different setting. This is set in New York City a lot, like literally every other cozy mystery series I've ever read takes place in a small town. This takes place in New York City, which was interesting. So there's some like some different stuff going on here. Um, 
I'm probably going to read the next book and like decide from there if I'm going to continue on in the series or not. But this follows Claire. She's like middle-aged. She has a daughter who's in like a freshman or sophomore in college. So she's a middle-aged woman um, who is who has like gone back to work at this coffee shop that she used to work at a long time ago and then she ended up moving to the suburbs and now she's back to work at this coffee house that her like ex-mother-in-law runs. She's going to manage, Claire's going to manage this coffee house and her ex-husband um, is like a buyer for this coffee shop. Um, so she's back to work. She's moving into the apartment above the coffee shop and one of her employees doesn't die but is like injured at the coffee house and they're kind of just saying oh it was an accident but she thinks but Claire thinks something else is going on and so she investigates. So again not like my favorite cozy series but there's some things that I liked about it. I, I liked kind of the change of pace. Not typical setting but there was also stuff I didn't like about it. So We'll see what I think of the next one. Um, then we have um, the Firefly Junk Junction series by London Lovett. Um, I buddy read that one, the first book in that, with Rainey and Amanda as well. Um, I've been listening to those on audio and then I bought um, some on my Kindle. Um, those are... They're like London Love It in general. I actually have another London Love It series I'm going to talk about. They're very short books, but they contain like a lot of like good, like good content. Like they're very easy to listen to. They, um, like, and I'm sure like when I read them physically, like these books are going to read pretty quickly as well. Um, so in the Firefly Junction series, I don't remember the name of the first one, but it's here. Um, murder in the park, maybe something like that. Um, you follow Sunny, who has just kind of moved back. I don't know if she's moved back home or just like where her sisters are, and she's like, like living in this like bed and breakfast that she wants to renovate and like open. But in the meantime, she is a like she's a journalist, um, <clears throat> like working for the low like she's gonna work for this local paper paper. And she gets her first assignment, which is to um, write up about this, like, janitor who has, like, been this, like, janitor of the high school for a really, really long time. And he just retired and she's doing, like, some fluff piece about it. Then the janitor turns up dead and she decides she's going to investigate with her, um, with her friend, rain is it rain it's not i don't think it's rainy i think it's just rain um so yeah so you have her sisters i love the relationship between the sisters there's so there's three of them and they all have like such different personalities which reminds me of me and my two sisters um you have the love interest with the detective which is fun um sunny has two dogs uh, which is fun. And there's like a little paranormal element to it that I've really been enjoying, like that whole like story arc in the first, I've read the first three now and that's been a good time. So really cute, uh, series so far. I'm enjoying it. Then we have another series by London Lovett, the Port DNB series. This is the first book, Marigolds and Murder. Um, this was a rainy recommendation and it's really, really good. Um, so in this series, you follow Lacey Pinkerton, who um, owns a flower shop in Port DNB and she has like a fantastic like sniffer. Like she has like a really, really good sense of smell and she uses that to help solve crime in Port Danby and it's just it's a good time. Um, I've only read the first two so far. I'm hoping to get to more of them uh, this fall and winter but so far I'm not really enjoying them. Uh, Lacey has a pet crow which you never hear about like what? Uh, a crow cozy companion. Love it. She also has a cat. 
um, but the uh, the crow gets more of, more screen time, if you will. Um, there's some really good friendships in this. Um, I love the like. There's like a couple like potential romantic interests. It's it's a good time. Then. Finally, definitely last but not least by any means is the Bake Shop Mystery Series by Ellie Alexander. Um, I'm only on like book five or six in this, but I've been enjoying it. I've said it before that I like the Sloan Krause series by Ellie Alexander a little bit more, um, but I really do enjoy the Bake Shop Mystery Series. So in that you follow uh, Jules, who in book one, she returns home uh, to her home in Washington. I always get, um, no, Oregon. <laughs> um, I always get the settings of the Sloan, Sloan Krause and Big Shop series like mixed up. She's in Oregon. Um, she's returning home because she's kind of like at odds with her husband and they both work on a cruise ship as chefs. And so she's returning home. She doesn't know for how long she's going to be there, but she's going to help run her mom, her parents' bake shop. And the town that she lives in, Ashland, um, is home to like a really like world renowned Shakespeare festival. And their family bake shop is kind of right in like the heart of like where like this, uh, like Shakespeare festival takes place like you can see like the theater and all of that stuff and so there are really busy times during like at the bake shop during like the height of the festival and then there's some slower times when there's not like the stuff going on for the Shakespeare festival so I've really loved uh getting to know all of the the friends and family of Jules and getting to know her um she's like, I feel like she's probably, like, around my age, so she's, like, you know, relatable in, like, what she's going through, like, some of her, you know, troubles. Um, I'm not at odds with my husband, but other things are more relatable. Um, and yeah, it's a good time. There's, like, a potential love triangle. I don't know exactly what's going to happen with that, but potential love triangle. Um, I love the um, employees that her and her mom have at the bake shop. You get to know them a lot, um, a little bit better throughout the series. It's a good time. Like I said, I, I like Sloan Krause slightly better just because I like, I guess, the beer aspect a little bit more than the baking aspect, but still a really, really good series. So those are like those are the five cozy mystery, mystery series that I've either started or continued on in um, this summer. Having a good time. Let me know down below. Have you read any of these? Are you interested in reading any of these? Give me all your thoughts. Are there other cozy mystery series that I should check out that I like have never heard of because there are so many. Every time I go to my library, I'm like, oh, there's a new one I need to check out. Um, so. Yeah, let me know. Give me some other cozy mystery recommendations, all that good stuff. That is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.